Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're here uh, to have our What's Next forum. Uh, this is where we speak uh, around the industry, trends, um, influencers, and uh, new, new things that are happening within the industry. So we appreciate you joining us. My name is Sandy McMurtry. I'm the Vice President of Interconnection Business Development here at QTS. Uh, we're very interested here at QTS in how the industry is uh, evolving, uh, especially as it relates to interconnection and uh, data center uh, proficiency within the industry. We understand that it's very important, uh, not just for QTS, but for the entire industry, that we are able to uh, diversify interconnection points within the industry and that we have a solid infrastructure of data center providers out there, of which we plan to be one, of course. Um, I'm here with Eli Shear, who is going to uh, help us discuss this within, uh, in, within this forum. Eli is from OpenIX. Eli, you want to give yourself a little introduction? Yes. Thank you, Sandy, and great to be here. Um, so uh, my name is Eli Shear. Um, as you know, um, I work with uh, OpenIX, the OpenIX Association, um, uh, which is an internet standards body. Uh, we set standards around the physical and operating uh, requirements for digital infrastructure. Uh, today, we have certifications for Metro Edge data centers, um, internet exchange points, or IXPs, um, and edge data centers of various shapes and sizes. Um, OpenIX is uh, an organization uh, that was founded uh, really to um, uh, promote the, the proliferation of internet exchange points. Um, and uh, I got involved with OpenIX initially uh, as a data center operator. Um, and I started volunteering um, because from my standpoint, uh, as a independent data center operator, uh, without access to an exchange point, I wanted to learn about and understand how I could attract interconnection in my facility. Um, so OpenIX uh, is a, an organization that's volunteer run, um, and, and we have participation from a broad group of industry constituents. Mm -hmm. That includes data center operators, uh, content networks, um, internet exchange point operators, um, and generally people who want to see uh, internet infrastructure developed responsibly. Um, that's more or less what we do. Hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, th those are things that uh, are very important to QTS. And, you know, having been around the industry for quite a while myself, you know, uh, there's a, a thought out there in many, many, many circles, including some held by myself early in my career that, you know, when you talk about a data center, um, sometimes folks will look at it as just a building, right? Just a place for space and power to put your processing equipment and, uh, you know, house what you need uh, in, that metro, in that metro area. Um, as, as the internet has evolved, you know, one of the things that we've uh, really kind of tuned in on here at QTS is, you know, as I said earlier, those are really key infrastructure points within the internet industry itself. So every dot on that map that is a data center, <clears throat> number one, the importance of the certifications is critical because, again, you're not just a building. You want to make sure that uh, you're meeting all of the necessary criteria. But also, as large companies build in and seek interconnection, you want to make sure those are hardened locations where folks do not want to necessarily have to jump around from data center to data center as times change. Most of these locations are pl uh, places people plan on investing in for years to come. So that is very important that we make sure we are building for the industry a hardened infrastructure yeah. uh, within the country and also globally. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I, I think um, you hit two things that are really important there. One, these are mission critical sites. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are as a network provider putting your gear in this facility, you need to know how it's going to perform. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how it's gonna perform, you can't design your service and therefore you know, police, uh, you know, VOIP lines don't work. Mm. Um, you know, kids can't access the internet for school. All kinds of very negative things happen uh, because you didn't know exactly 
what was what this fortress supposedly was built like. So, um, what our standards do, uh, specifically the OpenIX, uh, the OIX two standard, mm. um, it, it defines what what we view as really a concurrently maintainable standard. So. Um, this is your fortress, right? This is your metropolitan um, MSA fortress. You want to have, um, you you want to be sure that this application is not going to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, so so those are the physical requirements for the data center. But importantly, um, it's what happens within the data center as well. So yes, we need to know that uh, the infrastructure is as you represented it, uh, but we also wanna know that when you're in the data center, you're going to be treated fairly. Mm-hmm. And that's an important part of the OpenIX standard. It, it, it's a, uh, a legal standard um, called FRAND, uh, fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, all of the data centers that are OIX2 certified um, also promise that they're going to offer fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory pricing to their customers for interconnection or for access to interconnection or connections. The right? cross connects. Cross connects. They're running. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime they want to run fiber, um, they're going to be treated at least the same as the next person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's critical because uh, we think that allows for innovation. Uh, we think that allows for people to invest, um, knowing that they can be there for a long time. Um, and it allows for a lower barrier to entry for certain uh, startups or, or potentially more interesting uh, service providers uh, who can gain access to these services. Very good. Um, yes, and, and we're proud that we were able to get certified, uh, I believe, in 12 of our buildings um, here in the U.S., uh, and we'll plan on having more of those certified as well. Um, and then globally, you guys offer the certification globally yeah, as well. Yeah. So um, that's part of our expansion plan as we look towards Europe. Um, we definitely would like to make sure that we're, we're kind of staying within the, the certification process no, there as well. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, it, what QTS uh, certified 12 of their data centers. Mm-hmm. You are now uh, the data center operator with the most OIX2 certified facilities. Mm. Um, importantly, they cover many major interconnection points. Um, so we, as, as OpenIX, uh, were you know, very honored, uh, but also uh, extremely appreciative of the support um, because we feel that um, th- this is an important cause, mm-hmm. right? Um, a- allowing uh, networks and businesses uh, to to build, invest, and interconnect regionally mm-hmm. really benefits the local community. Right. It, it's not just about these big internet companies um, lowering costs um, because they do gain efficiencies, um, and that's okay. We think it's always good to be efficient. Um, but more importantly, it brings those services closer to the local community. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really is, uh, you know, look, lower latency is a better experience. Right. So, yeah. And as you're aware, most of the IXs are grassroots organizations that started, you know, very small with, uh, you know, a subset of customers, either uh, some uh community or uh, colleges, universities, things mm-hmm. like that. So um, one of the things we kind of proud our, pride ourselves on is we make sure that we have a, a good uh, collection of IXs in, in all of our buildings. So mm-hmm. all of the regional IXs, uh, we make sure that we're approaching them, whether regional or global for that matter. Uh, we, do, we do have uh, most of them in our buildings as well. And yeah, again, the importance of the internet is really built off of localization. That efficiency of having a local interconnection point improves performance for the user Mm -hmm. uh, as you move that content uh, closer to the eyeballs, as we'll call them. um, We find that uh, users will stay on their applications longer, they will use them more and have a happier experience, which does result in revenue, mm-hmm. which is of course important, but also just that you know reliability of the internet is yeah. is critical uh, yeah. for that. Absolutely, and yeah. and so that's specifically what the standards are meant to do. It's mm-hmm. meant to make it easy for a service provider to know the rules of the game. Mm-hmm. So for uh, a company like yours, you already built to a, a very high standard. Mm. Um, you're already living the the 
sort of the the mantra of open IX, mm -hmm. right? Trying to get involved in communities and mm -hmm. making interconnection more accessible. Mm -hmm. Where this is really interesting, we believe, uh, are in some of the markets where the information isn't accessible, mm -hmm. where uh, facilities haven't been built mm -hmm. to a, a high engineering standard, mm -hmm. a high level of resiliency. Um, and in fact, in many cases, they've cut corners and they haven't disclosed uh, what the infrastructure looks like. And therefore, you have service impacting events. Mm -hmm. um, also, Internet exchange points uh, internationally. Uh, you have folks who maybe want to build to a certain standard. They don't know how to do it. Um, they want uh, certain networks to, to join their internet exchange point because they know that's a good thing, but those networks aren't comfortable joining until they know what they're connecting to. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's where we think our standards can really help the internet broadly. Um, so it, you know, allow people to build to a standard that is consumable uh, because the internet needs to be everywhere. Right. If we're imagining a future uh, where, you know, the Internet is we're immersed in the Internet. Right. If we really think forward, what does this need to look like in, you know, 20 years? We're going to need not only computers in a lot more places, but networks talking to each other in a lot more places. And so the beginning of that is now. Mm -hmm. Right. It is going from uh, and you know this much better than I do, but from, you know, a single exchange point not too far from here. Mm -hmm. Right. To multiple and now we're spreading even more um, eventually I don't know what that looks like uh, does it have to be absolutely everywhere probably not but we just want to provide the rules right um, and, and if we do that we think you know, hopefully we've done our part yes and that, and that is a critical part as you say because that, as the internet grows and it is growing I mean it probably 30 40 percent year over year in terms of what's happening on the internet that we that we do that we the work we do the life we live is happening uh, at such a rapid growth rate um, that that reliability that kind of standardization is going to be critical because when large company whether it's small IXs or large companies make their decisions around localization having that kind of known standard uh, mm -hmm. out there and it's and obviously if it's certified as well that allows folks to move with confidence around the money they're spending and the time they're going to be uh, investing to build out um, we're seeing that you know as the internet grows you know as you mentioned there kind of used to be especially in the US really just kind of nine major connection points uh, when you talk about some of the larger networks. And that's already expanded to probably more like 25 at this point. And in the future, you know, it could be as many as 80 within the U.S. where, again, for ma ma uh, major hubs mm -hmm. um, where you see that locations where we started, we used to maybe take for granted as not being heavy use locations, um, get filled in very quickly mm -hmm. uh, because the backhaul, the costs, the potential uh, uh, performance latency issues that will that, that can happen will require that localization, that con continuous build out. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see foresee a, a, a near future or near term uh, uh, industry where we have as many as 80 you mm -hmm. know, interconnection points within just in the U.S., major interconnection points, yeah. not to mention all the smaller ones that will be necessary as well. Um, so, yes, that is one of the things that we're doing. So, you know, when we do something like this in the in the, in the What's Next forum, obviously there's, a, uh, there's an interest for QTS in terms of being a data center provider, but we know that this is actually going to be necessary for all of our peers as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we would like to continue getting the word out like this. We hope that everybody keeps, you know, the momentum going on what can happen in, within the industry, whether it's IXs, small or large IXs, or large ISPs. We want everyone to kind of hear this message and get out and, and be ready for what's going to be happening. So open IX is, pl is definitely playing a, a, a critical role in it. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we look, we try to be forward thinking, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we try to set standards um, around where we believe the industry is headed. Mm -hmm. um, to reduce waste, really. So um, as we thought about uh, what what are people going to need at the other end of these exchange points, mm -hmm. uh, that's where we looked at some of these edge, the micro edge data centers or mm -hmm. however you want to classify them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we 
defined different sizes, mm -hmm. um, none of which look like a Metro Edge facility, mm -hmm. right? They're, they are not concurrently maintainable. Mm -hmm. They are uh, facilities that will have um, single points of failure um, and maybe uh, it may be okay that they go down, mm -hmm. right? And, and you're gonna design your application accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, we set standards for those because we think that even though there may not be interconnection happening in those sites, mm -hmm. uh, it's still part of the ecosystem and it's still part of the infrastructure that's gonna deliver this service. And as we think more and more about it, whether or not it's uh, an interconnection point, it's shared infrastructure mm -hmm. or it's going to need to be, especially if it's ubiquitous. Right. Um, the, the providers are gonna need to share space, they may need may even need to share compute resources. They may even need to share radio access resources, mm -hmm. right? And these are things that nobody's quite sharing yet. So, even though it's not directly interconnection, uh, it still is facilitating the responsible development of infrastructure. So, and, and and the sharing, right? It's facilitating the sharing, and that to me is one of the key things that standards can do. Agreed, yeah. And I, I think what, what you'll see to your point around, you know, how deep we do we go uh, to the edge, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that will be taken care of by hierarchical caching, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the delivery companies will, um, you know, cache certain content at as local as a localized yep. position as they can, but also have a hierarchical backup. Like you said, yep. if a micro center goes down, they've got the delivery still available uh, from a, a little further distant location. Yep. And they'll prioritize based on the importance of that application, obviously. So, yep. but I agree with your point that allowing for that sharing uh, and understanding that that hierarchical uh, caching mm -hmm. is is taking place. It still requires cooperation between all of the companies involved. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that uh, I feel like I'm seeing within the industry is uh, the, you know, cooperation as we call it, right? Yeah. Um, I think companies are coming around to the fact that there's not one single company, no matter who you are, no matter how big you are, no matter how much money you have behind you, who can do, who can perform the service they perform by themselves. Correct. Everyone requires some form of interconnection, some some, some form of cooperation between networks. Yep. And that's where, again, it, it, you know, QTS wants to be a leader in uh, trumpeting that and allowing for uh, those interconnection points to happen in our buildings where, where, where possible, but also understanding that the industry itself is going to spread out and there's going to be plenty of uh, plenty of that need for all of us yeah. in, as we as we look across you know our peer groups and and, uh, and other companies within the industry so yeah. I think a lot of it is really just understanding that attitude that you know they we used to have a term back in the 80s of or 80, uh, early 90s the uh, the walled garden right mm -hmm. so the walled gardens just don't exist anymore you just yeah. can't there's no way you function as a company by having a, a you know all of your applications within the barriers of your network and and without sharing across um, your end user data as well, your mm -hmm. end user access, I should say, um, and uh, you know the application needs and and transport and transit needs that you need that you'll you'll have to perform your service is going to. Uh, cannot be within the walls of your network. It mm -hmm. just isn't possible anymore. Right. right. So. Yeah. And, and that was always something that struck me um, as I was uh, learning more about interconnection and mm -hmm. networks in general mm -hmm. uh, as a real estate developer, right? Mm -hmm. So as somebody who was developing a, a site, you're thinking, hey, I, I really want to figure out how to drive more NOI, how do I drive more income mm -hmm. uh, for this property? Um, and you're really thinking about, you know, transactions. Mm -hmm. um, the internet is built on people working together mm. and, and it's built on trusting one another. I'm gonna pass you traffic. You're mm. gonna pass it on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't give me anything bad. Don't mm. blow me up, right? right. And, and there are rules mm -hmm. that, that govern how that works. And but what was so shocking to me was, you know, they were kind of uh, opposing mindsets, mm -hmm. right? The one mindset is, you know, closing off the walled garden, mm -hmm. right? This is my area. You want to come in, you got to pay, mm -hmm. right? Versus this other mindset, which is we all have to work together. Right. Without multiple networks, there is no internet, right? Right. right. <laughs> um, 
it, it's just a net. Right, right. <laughs> so, right. so I mean, I think that mindset infused in the data center companies is really the key. And, and getting that into more companies, you guys clearly have it. You mm. understand this isn't all about, you know, the real estate. This is about the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. This is about the community. Mm-hmm. And and getting that out to more operators will, in fact, help interconnection grow. And I think will help um, the responsible development of, of internet infrastructure. Totally agreed. Yeah. And, and you know, the, 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 the old mindset, like we're, we're talking about here, um, really goes back to the days of the, of divestiture. Uh, and mm-hmm. I don't want to sit here and do a whole history lesson on the internet and divestiture, but a lot of that uh, kind of walled garden protectionism came from there. And it started with voice communications, obviously, with phone calls. Um, but now, because of the demands of the internet and the ubiquity of the internet, you see those walls falling down. Yeah. And, and again, because everyone's realizing they can't perform their their services without it, right. number one. Um, but number two, there's also enough revenue to go around for everyone, right? If, if it's an industry that's growing, you know, 30, 40 percent year over year, mm-hmm. there's going to be revenue for everybody involved um, so that, you know, commercials will take care of themselves. There are still plenty of commercial agreements that kind of dictate who pays who for certain things. Um, most of those price points are, are somewhat becoming commoditized mm-hmm. uh, to the point where, yeah, folks are just, you know, going to make some money. Everyone's going to make enough money and the Internet's going to keep growing that everyone should be happy. Right. Yeah. yeah. As long as the service is there. Right. I right. think um, I, even a few years ago, uh, you had major networks who wanted everything to happen within their environments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they realized it's not reasonable. Mm-hmm. They can't ask every single cloud provider and content provider and you know all these other networks to just to all come into their environment and the next guy and the next guy and the next guy right it's not reasonable and it won't happen Mm -hmm. so everybody's coming around to this concept that that we need to share um and and i think everybody generally accepts that standards help share so we just need to get more people yeah. <laughs> using them and, and certifying. That, that was going to be part of my next question. So what's uh, the OpenIX perspective as it relates to some of the larger networks, whether they be content providers, CDNs, or ISPs? Um, what's the relationship between OpenIX and, and some of those larger companies? Yeah, so um, right now, the only way to support OpenIX is through certifying data centers and IXPs. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to do a better job at engaging with the broader internet community and allowing for more entry points. Mm -hmm. Um, So that is something we're working on. Uh, We've developed uh, some interesting tools. We developed a a web-based tool called the Interconnection Navigator, uh, which allows you to uh, chart, um, literally with with graphs, uh, the growth of various interconnection metrics over time by geography. Um, it leverages appearing DB dating ba- uh, database and uh, um, pretty cool. Uh, we may try to get some people involved to support that and mm. the development of that. So we have some ideas on, on how we can uh, welcome uh, other uh, industry participants into our community. Uh, but yeah, we're always thinking. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, uh, peering DB number one is is pretty much uh, the roadmap or the Bible for a lot of the network companies. So I think that's probably a really good place to start. Um, is there anything that uh, data center companies like uh, QTS can do to help in that effort uh, as you, as you you know try to expand the reach within within OpenIX? Yeah. Look, I I, I think. Um, what you've done has been obviously very supportive uh, in certifying so many data centers. Uh, we'd love to get you to continue to certify and certify more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we really think it's important to help spread the message around interconnection. So um, helping to let people know that they can in fact uh, connect to multiple networks in your facility mm-hmm. um, and and do it uh, in a reasonable and fair way. Mm-hmm. Um, that to us is really, (laughs) that's the key, right? Mm -hmm. You do your job um, as a certified entity uh, and and it works for us uh, because you're part of our network. Uh, And and when networks, uh, other, 
<laughs> when when uh, companies uh, select providers, they select locations, they can see, hey, this is a uh, OpenIX certified data center. And look, there's an OpenIX certified IAC, uh, internet exchange point in here as well. This seems like a safe place to grow. Um, so yeah, great. keep doing what you're doing. All right, well, we appreciate you helping us with that. And that's what this, uh, this forum is all about, is getting that word out. Um, we appreciate the time that you spent uh, coming to meet with us here. Um, we thank everyone uh, for joining us. And yes, we're going to continue uh, getting the word out. Uh, QTS is, is fully on board with OpenIX. Uh, we're fully on board with uh, diversifying interconnection points. We hope our peers are as well. And I think the more that gets out there, the better for the industry. So again, uh, thank you for joining us for this What's Next forum. And um, we'll... See you next time. Thank you. Thanks for having me.